this is our first in a series of Ask Roger uh, videos where um, Roger's fans get to uh, ask him Beat questions directly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've gotten a bunch of questions and um, I'm just gonna, I'm not going to give them to you any particular order and you just uh, talk to your fans, okay? Sure. The first one is um, just curious, what is your favorite tool in your toolbox? Uh, favorite tool? I shouldn't say this, but my hammer. <laughs> my hammer is 72 years old and the wooden handle has fractured and I've got a bandage on it. And it's just the right weight to, it does little jobs, nice, and it also threatens. When you have a problem with something, you go get the hammer and say, you really want to do this? And you show it to that and pretty soon it happens. How about this one? I found this one interesting. Could you please dispel the myth that the British electrical systems are crap? It is a myth. Um, the only thing wrong with it is with Lucas per se. We'll call it Lucas because there's nothing else in England that has any electrical value at all. Um, Lucas is very interesting. It doesn't, it, the company does not recognize atmospheric conditions. Humidity must be zero and it function perfectly. For instance, if you're driving your beautiful Jag across the Sahara Desert, but you have a good radio, and you turn it on, you find some nice music, but it's in Germany, and the guy says, and now we have the weather report. It's going to rain today. The Jag stops. Just like that. It's just idiosyncrasy. But here's something to contemplate. You work on a Lucas-equipped car, the wiring in the car is actually copper. It's not fiber with coppery stuff in it. It's copper wire, break, multi small gauge wires with it. And that's something that few people can say these days. The other scary thing about Lucas is, I never would get on an airplane that's an air, Airbus made in Europe, because Airbuses are completely joystick operated. And guess who makes the system? Lucas. I will not get on that plane, because I love them dearly, but I don't quite trust them. And remember the motto, why do the British drink warm beer? Why? Because Lucas makes a refrigerator. <laughs> Why do they quit early in the winter time? Because they make the street lights. And it goes on and on and on and on. But it's a bad rap. Roger, did you ever have any interest in competing as a driver, mechanic, or owner in Formula One or IndyCar? There's a difference. Formula One is a race car. Indy is a <sighs> Neanderthal muscle flexing. Oh. The trouble with Indy is, and most of the ovals, there's only one place you can go, and that's up against the wall. The laws of centrifugal force. And I don't trust anything, really, that has narrow wheels and wide tires. There's something wrong with that law. But no, I haven't. Formula One would be a dream, which long ago has passed me by. Um, I would have probably fared reasonably well in the 60s when it was driver and a lot of slithering around and having the fun. Why don't you um, tell us a little bit about your years in a Crossley? Best years, the only, I had a lot of race cars, I didn't buy them. Um, the first race car in the United States was a Formula V. Dave Logan, Gerber Scientific Instrument, uh, built it in his garage, in his cellar, and then he figured out what all people do, 
that it can't get out of the house. So he came to the foreign car shop, which was a local non-alcoholic hang-around joint, and all of the fellow idiots went up to his house, tipped it up on its edge, and marched it out in the back. We put it on a trailer, garden tractor, he had to take the suspension off, but that's hard. He went to Lime Rock for a test day and scared himself half to death. Joe Gerber, Gerber Scientific, found out about it and said, no. So he, my father, years ago, gave me a high school trophy case. You know, those glass things? It was in the far end of the shop. I think it was in the bathroom, or I don't know. Had a bunch of junk in it that I did in Germany and stuff. I came in one day, Logan's looking at it. He said, do you race? <laughs> Fool <like> me, <laughs> what an opening. Uh, anyway, so he said, here, drive my car. So we went to races. I won the first race. In fact, that was almost the first race in the United States as a class. It was in, the driver's school was in beginning of April at Lime Rock. I never seen Lime Rock. I went up there and it was cold. Of course, it's always cold at Lime Rock in that time. But the thing that was scary was there was a bunch of standing around for the prep talk. Track's in pretty good shape, but there's ice on the downhill. And half the people who'd been there before fainted. I said, so, right? No. It was, all right, downhill was a little slippery, but the car only had about six horsepower at the time, so it didn't matter. Anyway, so we went racing two years in V. Once I came in fourth, and once I came in second. The rest of it was first. And the fourth was VW of that series, the 40 horse had a bad cam when they came from the factory. They had non-progressive long valve springs and very light but high lift. No duration, high lift for grunt. And I'm uh, you know, walking next to the car saying, I don't think this is good, right? And well, check the valve clearances are running a quarter inch because the tappets had gone away fixed it, that was the end of that. And, and then you progressed across the... No, Cooper. Cooper. Um, it was the car that Jackie Stewart won the European uh, Formula Junior champion at the time. Formula Junior was sort of a production sedan engine, 1100 cc's, no bigger, and it was a Cooper built, this was a sprite looking engine with a dry sump and a funny cam and a few other odds and ends, but the British are very good at funny cams. And Jackie Stewart did not win a race, but he was always second. Because at the time there was something called a strangolini, you know what that is? Yes, I do. They produced thousands of them. They were like cockroaches on steroids. They took the sedan, the Fiat 1100 sedan, steering box and turned it upside down. And then put linkage. So as a result, most stranglinis went ah, 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 ah. And when you were on the straightaway, it, you had to calculate. You know, if you're coming up. Pass. When, when he's doing this, you do that. And so Stewart never had the, they exploded with regularity. It was spectacular. The fans loved it. <laughs> Nothing left but olive oil and maybe some greasy things and stuff. But they didn't just break. They just, boom, went away. A Fiat engine turning 25,000 RPM. I don't know what it was, but. So we, Logan bought, sold the V, got good money, I guess, and bought the Cooper. And we had that for two years, I think, two years. 
It was problematical in the beginning because it hadn't been maintained and it had a broken rear main bearing cap, cast iron, which leaked. So, I don't know if this is a family show, but the bottom of the chassis had big, two big tubes, so I put an aluminum belly pan on it, right where the bell housing leaked out. This is not good. And, and you use some kind of absorbent material. Yes, yeah. Modes Hospital Grade. And every Friday I go to the supermarket and one of the nice ladies, you got a problem, Sonny? No, 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 just leaks a little bit. But that car, you could go further, faster, sideways. It, you never turned the wheel, you just kind of gave it a nudge and it was just beautiful. If it rained, I was supreme. Um, the national championship, we didn't go to that because some money problems, but um, the guy that was Billy Goobleman, daddy owns Citibank or something, he had a Brabham with the latest Ford in it and, you know, but once in a while it would rain. <laughs> the next thing was, when we were at Formula V, at Watkins Glen, Logan said, you've got to see this car. At the time, John was building a Formula C car. It looked like a knitting needle from the front. It was the most exquisite thing you've ever seen in your life. It's in the book. And that guy progressed to the 12F B car, and we bought that. No, no Dick Auer bought that for me. And that was tremendously fast, but the, the thing with a crossway car is, you take it out of the crate, you put air in the tires, and it was perfectly set up. You couldn't, nothing, I never adjusted one in my life. And they were dead easy to drive, you know, a schmuck like me. You just got in it, and you went faster than anybody else. He had another thing. Most cars, they drop the flag and are standing up. You, if you were careful, I never lost a start. I mean, it was really impressive. It just, it made me uh, about that much, and it just, boom! So the technique was burn them off the line in the start, and then do about your business, and they'd, they'd fight for second place. And, but, I met, John came over here many times, and he was a graduate of an agricultural school. I don't know if you knew that. I did. And, um, but he could conceptualize. He could look and see. In the beginning, we didn't get along too good because he knew stuff, and I thought I knew stuff. Well, whatever. But, what I found out was, and what we had ended up doing with John and I, he was building for Europe. For instance, in Formula Ford in Europe, they ran street tires, geometry street tires, and chassis loads in Formula Ford were minimal. Bring them over here, put slicks on them, they were a little bit twitchy. So I ended up doing the deuritizing. Deuritizing? Sounds like a disease you have to take a pill for. But, um, the Europeanizing, maybe? Yeah, okay. trying to get him to come out of Northern Ireland. Uh, the first time he came over, second time, third time, he brought a Formula A car over, a beautiful car, monocoque, the whole thing, but no money, but he gave it to me to race. We've gone to Thompson, in the uh, in November for some for practice, he came back. We put it into the shop. I went to show her and banged the heat. What's that? 
<laughs> Did you build what? <laughs> the world's oldest oil burner. He was in England. They were just working with double glazing. Do you know that? For windows? Storm windows. <laughs> A Northern Ireland, same difference. But um, you were very successful in the process. Yes, I won a national championship in 68, I think. And But the real thing, the real tickle the devil out of me, in spring of 68, yeah, we went to Virginia International Raceway. That was before It was a one and a half lane paved road through the fields, up the hill, around the oak tree, down, it was a busy park. And the light pole, the communication poles were stuck in the edge of the pavement. You know, for the, and in practice, I took four and a half seconds off the track record. And the guy that had the track record was Cal Shelby in the latest Fazuzzi. <laughs> You know, and what tickled the death out of me, all of the other B cars went home. So I didn't get the nine points. So Logan said, tell you what, we'll show up, you go out, beat the record all the pieces, I'll say, come home, we saved the tires. And it ended up, for most of the day, I had the track record by four and a half seconds. And then the last race was, forget the guy's name, McKee or something. He had the latest McLaren flight. No, it wasn't. It was, a low, I don't know what it was. The two-seater, 700 horsepower in the back, trumpets everywhere. He got me by, he got the record by two tenths of a second. It really ticked me off. <laughs> Uh, is there a particular car that you absolutely dread working on? And don't say Alfa Romeo. No, my own. My own. <laughs> Truthfully, uh, I, don't, I, I make agreement when I get a car. Mm -hmm. Open the driver's door, oh, it runs. I back out and I say, now here's the deal. I won't come up under the hood and mess with you. You don't come back in the driver's seat and mess with me. You got it? That's up. And the results are not very good. <laughs> Want to say anything to your fans? I'm still here. Uh, I've got something to say for my friends. It's fans. This is heaven. Right here, this place. I intend to die Probably not here because you know you only get janitorial service once a month. Yeah, or we'd have to sweep you into a corner for a while or something. I'd stink. Uh, but this is it. Um, I'm happier than a pig in poop. <laughs>